What's going on my Cardano friends? It is your friend Jack here and in today's video we're going to be going over Cardano NFTs and the growing scene that is Cardano NFTs as well as some NFT projects that I have my eyes on. Without further ado though, let's get into the video. First things first though, if you don't want to spend all your ADA on NFTs and you want to earn passive ADA on your ADA, you can do so without locking it up by staking with a stake pool such as Jack Stake Pool. There's a video down in the description if you want to learn how to stake your ADA. But now let's get into the NFT projects. And generally, there's been a lot of NFT projects popping up lately. There's also been a lot uh, that are profitable for a flip or that are just, you know, fun communities to be in. I'm not going to talk about every single one in this video, but I do want to highlight the ones that I have been fascinated by personally and that have caught my eye in the past few weeks or the past month. Now, first thing I want to talk about is that a little bit back two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I did a video called the secret NFT recipe. And in my eyes, this video has remained pretty true. Um, mass appeal art that has uh, the ability to be recognizable as PFPs and also just generally different from, uh, you know, NFT to NFT. Um, in the high quality that is, you know, zombie chains or chilled Kongs, these have great uh, network effects that if one person gets them and they keep rolling on people get them because they look they like the way they look and then the FOMO kicks in and then the floor price goes crazy so in my opinion this is held true and there's a few NFT projects the first three I'm going to look at here who kind of follow this recipe quote unquote um, and the first one to look at is Raging Teens so this is one that I personally just enjoy uh, the art in general but they do have also have a pretty strong community um they go around and raid people's posts on twitter they raid in mine and overall i think the art is very very clean i went ahead and picked out myself five of these bad boys um i didn't get in on the mint but i got some with water guns um just because that's what i like you know i think the art is really good i think there's a very good chance these follow kind of the chill kongs and zombie chains feel in terms of community and people really just liking their nfts um but past that i don't want to look too much further i haven't looked much further um and honestly very honestly here when you're looking at any of these projects whether it be a metaverse one like pavia uh, or whether whether it be something else with a bit more depth like dead pixels you can't really predict um you know you can't really predict the outliers and the ones that just exploded in nowhere it's hard to see those coming and don't beat yourself down if you miss out on some it's okay that the chill kongs for is now 750 ada in the video i posted over here it was 190 right so things happen uh, you don't have to fomo into everything if you're gonna buy a jpeg make sure you like it or make sure you have strong convictions in the future of the jpeg as an investment um, at the very, very least, if you're going to FOMO into something. But I'd always avo avoid the FOMO and wait some time. Easier said than done, though. That being said, though, let's get back into Raging Teen Clan. I think these are a very good project in general in the arts. Um, I don't know everything that's coming, but it seems they have multiple people on the team um, that are here to kind of make things work. And I think this is a huge thing uh, for me. Someone who's created a project pretty much by myself, um, I find it very hard to really manage everything, um, especially at the time when things were a lot more, you know, hectic and things were going on. For stick fricks, managing it with one person is just not the way to go. Um, it just is not the way to go. And I think having more than one people, you know, four, five, six people on a team is very beneficial and does rub off. On the community in a very good way in terms of engagement in terms of interaction in terms of the community feeling like they're very welcomed it's hard to do that as one person and i think having four people is great so that's another thing talking about floor prices and things like that the raging teens went up to about 100 floor um for a day i bought two over there uh, because I really liked the ones I was getting um, I'm okay with holding them now that the floor went back down to 50 but I do think that this is a solid project and I don't think anyone's just going to be giving up their NFTs of Raging Teens anytime soon just because the floor drops because they actually like the art which is a really good and you know a really good strong point to hold a floor price up and also floor prices tend to give the community a little bit of you know pep 
and to make people a bit more excited, it seems. Because after all, who doesn't want to see their investment go up? I think everybody in the community, uh, whether they be in it for the money or in it for the art, are going to be satisfied if the price goes up at the floor or their Kong is worth more than it was previously or whatever NFT we're talking about here. And in the sense of chilled Kongs, I do think that there is a very strong community there. And anyone who ends up getting into chilled Kongs, whether it be from FOMO or just because they like the art, they're welcomed by a group of people who enjoy what they're doing. And I think that's very important. I think that's recognized when people join. And that's why I think places like Kongs and other communities like Raging Teens and another one we're going to talk about in a sec here are very strong in the sense of community. I don't think that's everything. I think that is only a small fraction of what makes a project successful long term. But I do think it will induce a lot more people to come into the community and see what is going on uh, than if it didn't happen at all. Now, back to Chilled Kongs and talking about them. As I said, I made a video about this about two weeks ago. They sold out in, I believe, 12 to 15 hours. And there's a lot of people who really like the Chilled Kongs. Now, upon my first video, there was a lot of people or there was a lot of, you know, wasn't much holders, I guess I should say. Uh, there was about about half the holders there are now. There was a thousand for 9,000 minted assets. Um, it has since went up. It's still not the best ratio, but this just means that for the most part, part there is more people who own a lot, right? It's two to 10. A lot of people own two to 10 Kongs and, you know, only 1,200 people own one. So a lot, almost a third, I believe, of the, you know, number of holders owns more than one chilled Kongs, which is quite a lot or more than a third. So that's something to show that people really like them. But over time, I believe, uh, you know, a project getting more people in the project uh, and more unique holders is a good thing. And that seems to be happening and seems to be the case as the floor price rises and people kind of FOMO in. In general, Chill Kongs have a pretty generic roadmap, nothing too special, but I guess what really popped these off was FOMO and also just people liking the art. Um, I do think having six people on the team was very beneficial as they could upkeep community and also, you know, try to build stuff and put out content, things like that. I think there was a lot of things that you can't really predict here or can't really recreate. It's like getting winning lot winning lottery ticket numbers, but I think they've done a good job. I don't know where they're going to be in two to six months, and I don't think anyone does. I don't know any people on the team, and I can't speak for their previous experiences. It's like going and looking at Bored Apes. You, there's no way you really could have known that the team behind Bored Apes was that strong and that you know ready to rumble, ready to put things out, ready to change the way people look at nfts it's really hard to know that in advance the floor for chilled kongs is up about three and a half x from my last video no i'm not a genius i'm still a complete idiot and obviously i did not buy any chilled kongs and i still don't have any chilled kongs even more of an idiot so please do your own research and definitely don't follow what i'm saying uh, or take it with a grain of salt at the very least okay so Pretty much, Chill Kongs have been doing very well in the market. That is the consensus here. I think it's going to be hard to replicate the success, and it was really hard to see this coming. Uh, going from a 200 floor, about 4x of min price, all the way up to now 719 uh, within a few days. So that is pretty hard to gauge. Um, a lot of it does come down to people really liking it and kind of sweeping that floor. And a lot of it does come down to also people not wanting to get rid of it because they fear they're going to miss out or they're going to lose that huge next run up, which I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't think anyone does. Now, another project I want to talk about is Goat Tribe. I'm not going to talk about this project too long, but pretty much what I want to highlight is this is another project with just a solid community and a solid amount of people who are very interested in the NFTs they hold. They don't want to get rid of them. They just like them. There's no big, big roadmap here either. There's no in-depth white paper. It's really just the arts. And it's the same thing for Chill Kongs. It's the same thing for Raging Teens right now. There's nothing too in-depth to say that things are going to happen. Right now, they have hinted, though, that there's going to be a grass and goats love grass. So they, are, they might have a token here. Who knows, right? It's interesting. And I do think that before this, even though, most people were just here to have a community, have people to talk to that they like, 
and I think the art resonated with a lot of people as it was clean and simple. There is 2,000 wallet holders, and the floor right now is 139 if you're interested in that. But overall, they have performed very well in the aftermarket, and people are very interested in holding them rather than selling them. Okay, so those are three projects that I have my eyes on or have caught my attention in the past few weeks. Um, I'm not saying that I own any Chill Kongs or Goats. I do own some Raging Teens. Um, and now I want to look into some projects that haven't minted yet and do have my interest for mints. Um, whether I'll be holding them or selling them, I don't really know yet. But to me, these projects look pretty promising um, as just core projects in general from the arts and from the community sense that I'm getting being in the discords. First project I want to talk about in the NFT scene that hasn't minted yet is Soho Kids. This project is looking pretty promising in my eyes from an, just an art point of view and also the team's point of view. Oxy has been around in the CNFT space for a while. I think that he has a lot of promise and experience that has been shown with being the marketing manager for JPEG Store. And the artist, Diago, it's just obviously the art speaks for itself. It's really nice. It's clean. It's easily, easily indistinguishable from other PFP projects. And I do think that there's going to be a mass appeal behind this. Also, I've been in the Discord, I've hung around there, it is pretty active, and there's also a lot of people who are just genuinely interested in the project and being part of that community. So for that reason alone, I'm interested in minting it. Am I going to go and mint 30? No, but I am very interested in the project, and I do think it will do well um, if it keeps up this momentum. When I say do well, I mostly mean sustain mint price, as that is seems to be the gauge that um, is there a community there? Yes, then the mint price usually goes up or the floor price usually is greater than the mint price. That's usually that supply and demand factor. Um, it's not an easy thing to always get right. And I do think that so kids will be able to accomplish that. I can't speak for it long term. I can't speak for it in the month, two months, three months. I just think their mint will go pretty well. That's what I'm going with here. OK, I don't have any Super Bowl predictions. I don't have any super great advice to give you to make you a million dollars. And I sure as heck am still an idiot. So please do your own research. Now, next, I want to talk about Bright Pals. Once again, I think Bright Pals has what it takes to have a successful mint, sell out and sustain the floor price at the mint price um, because there is enough demand there to meet the supply. I think Bright Pals can do this. I think a lot of people are going to pick up a lot of Bright Pals because of just the art in general and what's going on here. They have three people on their team. Just a basic roadmap. Once again, nothing crazy. Um, so I'm not sure long term how this is going to go. And just kind of a general website. Nothing too crazy. 8,888 supply. The art looks pretty good. Yes, it does remind me a lot of doodles. But I think that's mostly just the pastel colors. Other than that, I think there's a lot of mass appeal to the cartoon style. And I think a lot of people are generally just going to want to get a few of these to have them in their wallet and to kind of collect. And that is pretty much what I've been ingesting in terms of NFT content for the past, you know, two to three weeks. I think there's a lot of promising projects in the scene. Um, Mikasi just released a bunch of information in forms of a white paper and news. Their floor has shot up recently quite a bit, which is interesting. Uh, Pavia, Cardania, some other metaverse, Artifact Moon all seem to be doing very well in the aftermarket. Do I think this is a long term metaverse? Dump it all your money into it now? No, but it is something to take a look at if you're interested in metaverses. Um, I don't think we're going to have a true metaverse for a while now, but there could be some huge profits there to be had if you're interested. Also, Dead Pixels, a project that I've been bullish on for pretty much since I got into NFTs back in however many months ago, I still am really bullish on. I'm going to do another video on Dead Pixels for the revised version of the white paper. And once again, I love Dead Pixels. There's also a bunch of other projects I love that I haven't mentioned in this video, like Yummy Universe, Claymates, Space Buds, all the good ones. Um, but yeah, that's the video for today. I do think that the Cardano scene is growing in the NFT volume um, with Chill Kongs and all these other great high quality art projects coming up. I think we're going to see a lot more people come from Ethereum and test out Cardano. Anyways, now you know what I've had my eyes on for the past few weeks. By no means is this the only projects that are going to make gains are the ones that I've had my eyes on. After all, I'm just another idiot in my mom's basement. So take everything I just said with a grain of salt 
And don't go and just ape into projects because I mentioned them in a YouTube video. Do your own research, decide if you actually like the project, then figure the rest out. But in all honesty, I have no idea what's going to boom next, what's going to have that nice 100x, that 10x, Florida, 1000 ADA. I don't know. But I hope you guys have a great freaking day either way. It's been your friend Jack. Peace out.